Now, after we close the switch for t greater than zero, the switch is closed, those two resistors are in parallel, so what we have here is 11.25 kilo ohms. Again, we realize that all of this is a non-inverting amplifier with an input of 5 volts, and again given by this resistor and that resistor. And it's easy to find then what is the voltage here. That voltage again is given by the non-inverting amplifier formula. Input voltage 5, at least one, multiplied by 11.25 kilos plus 2.5, this plus a, divided by R1, which is 2.5. And that is, let's see, 5, that multiplies, parentheses, 11.25 plus 2.5. Mm -hmm. Highlight the whole thing, divided by 2.5. We say enter, that is the expression, we check that it is. We ask to evaluate that, and that is 27.5 volts. This is 27.5 volts, the voltage there. And now, we go to this point where we know the voltage here, we know the voltage here, which is 5. And we do not know the voltage here, which is the interesting one, the voltage in the capacitor. How do we proceed? Well, what I prefer doing is I say the voltage here is 27.5 volts, it's known. The voltage here is 5 volts. And I replace this capacitance by its P operator impedance, which is 1 over Cp. In short, I write this as 20 microfarad. So this is that impedance. We are ready to write a KCL equation in the P domain with currents in the branches like this, like this one. And like this one. Oh, this is not just a steady state anymore. There is a current there. Let's write a KCL equation for V1. So, KCL equation for node 1. There's going to be currents going in. 5 minus V1, same as before. Same as before. 5 minus V1 divided by 1 kilo plus this current, 27.5 minus V1. divided by 4 kilos. And that is equal to V1 over 2 kilos. Plus this current, which is V1, divided by this impedance. Hmm. 20 P V1 divided by a million. And that is the equation we need to solve for V1. That is our equation. We type enter. We're going to solve for V1, which is this variable. Solve. Bingo. That is V1 as a function of P. That is actually a first order differential equation in V1 that we need to solve. Let's write that equation over here. That is the equation. But instead of writing V1, because V1 is just the voltage in the capacitor, a VC, I wrote VC. This first order differential equation has a solution that is simpler for us to solve. The final value is given by final value of the capacitor is phi 9375 divided by 87.5, 6, 7, 8, 6 volts. That is the final voltage of the capacitor. So the final voltage in the capacitor is going to be given by this constant divided by this coefficient, like here, 6.7 A6 volts. And the time constant of change between the initial voltage, which was, as we saw, 10 volts, and this final value of 6.79 volts is given by 1 divided by 87.5. The time constant of change is 1 divided by 87. And these are seconds. So the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time 
that you're going to be given by a constant final value 6.786 plus an exponential with an initial value of 10, the final value already mentioned, and a time constant, and that is the inverse of 87.5. So that is negative 87.5. These are volts. If we want to have a look at that as a graphic, we say the voltage in the capacitor starts at 10 volts, ends at 6.786, like here, and go from here to there with a time constant given by this, given by that. This is out of scale, of course. This is the, if you were asked, how long do you have to wait for the circuit to be in steady state again? So we are estimating that to be five taus. So five times uh, this amount. That would be 57.1 milliseconds. Thank you very much.